Uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, I raise to support uh, uh, the uh, motion uh, on uh, two, mainly two reasons. One is uh, the fact that uh, uh, GMO, uh, the technology used in GMO, is a controversial, significantly controversial uh, technology, and uh, many countries uh, have banned or restricted the use of GMO. And even then, we have uh, banned it for over 10 years, and there has never been a good reason to explain the rash decision uh, by the president uh, who was in office for some few, excuse me, Madam Speaker, I'm, can you protect me from? Honorable uh, Ivo Barra, please do not obstruct the speaker with the person who is on the floor. And even if you look, uh, the president was uh, hardly in office, uh, maybe for six weeks, uh, when he called the so-called uh, meeting of um, uh, the cabinet ministers and uh, unbanned the use of GMO. There was absolutely no review, no explanation given as to why 10 years ago it was bad and it should be banned. And now uh, that decision has been reversed. There has been no public debate, no discussion, no engagement and therefore the use of GMO is uh, something that uh, is so important that it cannot be left to a president to a cabinet uh, uh, of uh, some few uh, ministers or any other person it is something that concerns all of us and we should be able to engage and debate and also ask the, the, the difficult questions why do we unban it now what is the reason for it? It sounds very fishy. It sounds smelly. It, start, it sounds um, uh, stinking in some ways because it appears as if there is an attempt to use the, uh, the problem of um, drought in our country as a pretext to bring these particular uh, uh, crops into our country through the back door. The second problem related to GMO is the cross-fertilization, the, the cross-pollination uh, pollination of seeds. And these seeds are controlled and produced by big, by technical transnational companies uh, that are abroad. And those seeds are going to be very expensive, first of all. The growers have no rights. And they're going to devastate uh, the, the local crops, the traditional cultural crops that our peasants and our farmers um, can plant. And, and therefore, this would be quite a devastating uh, uh, importation. And finally, uh, Madam Speaker, is the issue of importation of GMO maize. Even if there is a necessity to, export, uh, to import, why don't we import non-GMO maize, which is all over the market? It is something that we can purchase and bring into the country. But even then, it is the timing. Why do we bring in this maize at a time when our farmers are harvesting and there is sufficient maize on the market? So the question is, who is benefiting from this? Who is driving this idea? Uh, what cartels are likely to cash on on this one? And why would the government that is committed to helping to, to develop our farmers is now undermining the very farmers it has been supporting by being, bringing in cheap GMO maize into the market and destroying them, destroying their market, destroying their livelihood. Therefore, I support and I, I reject.